just because it's a good price doesn't mean that you have to buy it. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today is just a really quick uh, sort of impromptu video about a new bag that I just opened the box of and I'm realizing immediately is gonna be going back. So now this channel is called KW Shops. I have probably more handbags than one could rationally justify already. But uh, today's video is mostly for the purpose of like uh, leveling with you guys and hopefully you can relate to some of the things that, that um, I talk about here. Uh, this is a bag that I just took out of the box and I'm realizing immediately that we're not gonna work out. Yeah, yeah immediately no. My... Immediately well. no. <laughs> immediately no. Uh, the purpose of this video is just kind of like collectively, like together, make sure that we keep our heads on straight when it comes time to, to purchase luxury. Uh, not everything that you come across is necessarily gonna be the bag for you, even if you love it, even if the price is right, even if you think it's cool, just because you can have it does not mean that you should have it necessarily. Without further ado, this is the bag in question. This is a really, really cool vintage Chanel vinyl um, waterproof beach bag. Um, it has a white CC with a circle around it that says waterproof here in English. Tanche in French, which also means waterproof. And this is what, and I think this is Japanese. Um, and that also I imagine says waterproof. If any of you can read Japanese, then uh, please tell me what that means. So what no one tells you about working in the luxury resale industry is that it is the most expensive occupation I think one could possibly imagine. Now, it, of course, obviously, like being at work, you see things, you get tempted. Uh, a lot of the time bags will come in and they're just so wildly expensive that, you know, it's not even worth it to even consider especially when you're inundated every single day. Um, but this was different. I randomly came across this bag when I was scrolling through Instagram and I fell in love with it immediately. Uh, the seller was selling it for a great price. When I say great, I mean amazing. So a Chanel bag under $1,000 in 2022 is almost not a thing anymore, uh, especially considering that uh, this is was is in excellent condition. It's actually a bag size bag, not an accessory that, that people are wearing around their belt loops, but putting a, a card and three paper clips inside of and being something cool and stylish that I actually do gravitate towards aesthetically. That happening is getting fewer and further between with every passing day. Immediately I knew that I loved the style. I, I really liked that it was like a different type of material. Um, I like that the logo was understated. I like that it was something different like very very unique it's not one that like you're gonna see a million of out there in the world um, it was vintage obviously let's say again the price was amazing and I thought it was just a really really interesting touch that it has these adjustable handles and one thing that one thing that's really good is that I didn't immediately I didn't immediately like add this to my cart check out and purchase no I stood over it for a couple of weeks um, the seller that I initially saw it from the, the bag ended up selling but I was on the hunt all of a sudden um, I googled I, I did all of my searching through a lot of the resources that a lot of the resources that I use and it just so happens that I found one I found this one on rebag and while it wasn't exactly as good of a price as I found it from the initial um, from the initial Instagram seller it was like not too far off and I think I decided in that moment that after all the weeks of stewing over it, of drooling over it, I decided I had to have it. So this bag was delivered today. I took the bag out of, out of the box, out of the dust bag, and I just looked at it and I knew, <sighs> where am I going with a giant red beach tote? I thought I was going to be able to get, a, like, get my mind around the color. I just really like like it aesthetically i like the cc right here in the middle even though it's like giant and plastic and yes objectively ridiculous we get it um i just thought it was cool i thought it was cool i thought it was really different and i really could not get like and at seeing it at that price which is something so much more attainable like just was all the more reason why i couldn't tell myself no until now now we're saying no and these are the reasons why so the first reason is that 
I don't wear a lot of color. Um, I remember like in the, I guess like in the 2010s, like a red bag was like a staple, it was like a staple pop that was like needed for every wardrobe. Uh, that isn't so much the case nowadays. Red, red bags are actually a lot harder to sell than they used to be. And the thing is that specifically for me and my wardrobe, I don't wear red. I hate red. Red is just not a color that I gravitate towards. I more so go for blue tones, bluer tones if I am doing color, and I don't really wear a lot of color as a whole. I more so go for neutrals, I more so wear black, I like to wear white, uh, olive green is the other color that I wear. And I just, not that, not that something like this should be like matched with your outfit necessarily, but a giant red bag for for a person who hates red like this is a lot of red not to mention this is a humongous bag even by my big bag loving standards um it's gonna take up a lot of room on the shelf and to be very honest uh, with this material i don't know how comfortable i would be with folding it if i ever were to travel with it oh right because i go on so many tropical vacations in my life next reason is that you know, it says waterproof here in three languages. This is a beach bag. So a lot of people shudder at the thought of a wildly expensive beach bag, which I completely understand. Now the thought of a very expensive beach bag, like that, it, that is not a wild concept to someone like me necessarily because I mean, hello. I don't go to the beach. I just don't. Being a beach bum or a part of my lifestyle, then I wouldn't even blink. Just, don't find myself going to the beach enough, especially to justify having a, a beach bag that costs $1,000. While yes, I do live in Miami, um, I live across the street from the ocean, I can all but cartwheel into the sand. If I'm being real with myself, I've been to the beach one time in two years. What am I thinking? <laughs> well, of course, this is a really, really big bag. What, am I taking it to work with me? Not that it would be inappropriate for my work setting, but just realistically, this is a giant vinyl waterproof bag that, you know, it needs to be holding somebody's towel. It needs to, I, I honestly don't know what people take to the beach, but whatever they do take to the beach should go in there. And it has to go back to the store. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a search and see what other colors this bag comes in, but I was even going down the pathway of thinking like, oh, maybe if it were black or maybe if it were white or you know, maybe if it were olive green, a color I actually do wear, would I need this? And ultimately the answer is no. It is a vinyl waterproof beach tote and that doesn't change the fact that with three jobs, when am I going to the beach? And the answer is not enough to justify a Chanel beach bag. <laughs> this beautiful and gorgeous bag deserves to go to a good home, a home, the home of someone who lives their life with their toes in the sand, goes to the bougie beach clubs and jet sets all over Europe. And that person, unfortunately, at least for now, is not me. <laughs> This bag would even do well in the hands of someone who is a Chanel collector. I don't, see, I don't fancy myself a handbag collector necessarily. We've talked about a lot um, here on this channel is that I can only justify keeping a bag if it is if it is in regular rotation of use. If I can use it on a, on a, rel on a regular basis, a um, couple of times a month is more than sufficient, then that's how I can justify keeping it. This is something that would sit and collect dust and wait for me to go to the beach one time per year and that is a lot of money to sink into a bag I'm only really going to wear one time. So there's one really important thing I need you guys to remember and that is that I work with handbags almost every day of, of my regular daily life. So just, just simply because like I see I see so many of them come come through my hands every single day like I know when I love something. So the bag, uh, another bag I bought recently that came a couple of days ago was this one. And this one I was swooning at first sight. Uh, this is one that I have worn around the house. I sit it next to my computer when I'm typing at my desk at home. I've had it for maybe four or five days and I've already carried it twice. My stuff is in it right now. And while even though I do find it a bit small from a, a bit small for my liking, this is something that really does speak to me and it's like and 
what I want to reiterate is that like I know what it's like when I love something and this unfortunately is not doing that. So this is just a word for you guys. Just because I work in the industry doesn't mean I'm completely jaded. Um, I get sucked into the addiction just like you guys, probably even worse than you think. So hopefully you guys can take away uh, a little bit of the message here. And the message is just because you can have it doesn't mean you need to have it. Just because something is attainable does not mean it is necessary. Just because you can have it does not mean that you should have it. Just because you can afford it doesn't mean you need to take it home. Just because it's a good price doesn't mean that you have to buy it. So there's a really cool video that, that I did a couple of years ago that clearly I am going to have to revisit once again. And, and that is one where I ask several questions, it's several questions to lead you down the path of whether or not you should actually consider adding something to your wardrobe. Uh, that video will be linked down below in the description box. And it lays out a couple of questions you should objectively ask yourself before you make an impulse purchase. Be realistic about your lifestyle. And once you start dreaming up like phantom events that don't actually happen for you in order to justify a purchase of a handbag, it may be time to walk away. Um, that video will be linked down below in the description box. Definitely one that you wanna check out. I know I'm going to after all of this. I'm gonna go curse myself out off camera so for making this silly of a purchase. But I do hope that you guys enjoyed uh, this, little, this little reminder, <laughs> even if it served no one but myself. So I definitely wanna hear your thoughts. Comment down below with any items that you A, regret purchasing, or B, any stupid purchases you've made like this one. Love to see those from you guys, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Um, I do videos all about the resale market if you're new, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye! Where am I going in this? Ugh. Maybe if I keep it, I'll actually go to the beach. I'm not going to the beach, am I? Okay.